Hello everyone, welcome back to GG and this is part three. I did a third part for today and we'll just continue where we left off. Uh, fans far more stressed when destroying pictures of their wives than their favorite players study finds. So a study involving Newcastle United fans found they were five times more stressed when tearing up images of their partners compared to their favorite football players. So this is interesting because in the last video I was talking about um, how they're trying to uh, basically feminize the man, the male uh, character. They're trying to change the traditional family setting and they're doing a really good job of it. Uh, we were talking about uh, what? About male birth control? Um, also, genetically engineering ethical babies is a moral obligation, says Oxford pro professor. So, talking about genetic screening and eugenics. And uh, sports. And I said that it helps feminize men. And you'd be like, huh, what, you know? Don't they get all testosterone about it? And it's like, actually, yes, they do for a brief period. But then um, they take all of that aggression from the work week as a death slave. And then they are able to um, basically vent or get it out vicariously through these overpaid athletes. And um, by doing that, they actually um, are becoming conquered <laughs> generation by generation with these sports. So we're talking about in this other article actually modifying uh, babies by genetically screening them and weeding out uh, the ones that are have personalities that are more likely to be um, you know violent right to fight back. So I mean this is good news in the way of it means that the eugenics or the social engineers or programmers have not gotten what they wanted quite yet. But they were asked to cut up photos of their wives and their team to see which affected them the most. Um, also, what? Voodoo dolls. They actually had voodoo dolls. I'll go down here. And it says here, one participant is then shown two dolls, one presenting his wife and the other representing his te uh, team's star player. When asked to stick in a pin which one would rather get ill for a week, he opts for his wife. So it all comes down to destroying the family, and I think that's what we saw. So moving on here, man killed by cops, shot 30 times. I believe this is the one about a homeless man. So it says here in a, uh, basically a, a hail of police gunfire outside a strip mall. Oh, he's probably interrupting commerce. They had been arguing with these political law enforcement officers next to a Chinese restaurant when he was shot in full view of passing motorists and while he was holding some sort of knife. Oh, a slave holding a fucking knife. Oh, my God. So Saginaw counter uh, prosecutor Michael Thomas said later that the squad of political law enforcement pigs confronting him opened fire because apparently at this point in time he was threatened uh, to assault police. So, of course, they go in there and said he had a long history of uh, contacts with law enforcement and known to be an assaultive person. Well, if you know cops, you know that any form of questioning of their authority will lead them to just assume that you are a violent person, you are being agitated, you are not complying with their authority over you. So they'll just deem you as being uh, combative. Actually, that's what the cop called me when I started to question the cop uh, la what, two months ago. He was saying I was being combative. He kept saying, using that word, because I was actually uh, questioning his, uh, his, uh, his actions, right? So it says here, uh, that Hall's mother is growing impatient with the probe and questions why police opened so furiously on her son, whom she said was mentally ill. She said that he was not violent. And uh, just a quick side note, dude, is when it comes down to the violence, I thought about this, like a philosophical argument, really. It comes down to two things, which is the state is what? They, they only, they're only able to have their authority over its citizens through the threat of violence and coercion. So... With that being said, uh, citizens that don't want to have the authority, don't want the state to have authority over them, uh, they're in a, quite of a, a predicament because they can't, they don't want to use violence, right? They don't want to have to use violence. Unfortunately, the majority of the citizens them ar around them are so scared and frightened and have been threatened enough to where they don't challenge that authority anymore and they completely recognize it and as it being a just form of of authority over them. So they handed over their decision-making power for themselves over to the state. So this is kind of how I see it. 
So you have all of these basically brainwashed drones that don't mind being slaves. Well, th there's a few, you know, there's a few, a minority that don't like it. And if you don't like it, you're going to be um, basically coerced into going along with these cops because you don't want to lose your money. You don't want to get tased for not complying and being, quote, combative. So it would just be nice if people would start to think you know, more independently, they start to question things more, and we can do this peacefully, because most things that happen that are long-lasting are like, you know, it could be done non-violently, I guess, but, but at the same time, when you think about it, the powers that be always win. The state always wins over the people. Why is that? Did you ever notice that? They just get shit done. It's because they use violence, but they don't exactly use violence themselves. They use shitheads like these cops and other government officials that carry it out for them. In other words, we're doing it to ourselves. And then this is what you get. Two police killings linked to anti-government movement. Suspects consider themselves, again, here we go, the term that the government uses, not the actual people, sovereign citizens. So, um, yeah, this is what you're going to get. The murders of two police officers in Louisiana have been linked to anti-government movement. They're not a movement. It says here, according to authorities. So it says here, several of seven suspects busted in attacks on police that killed two and injured two others are members of the sovereign citizens movement who believe any form of government is illegitimate, reports ABC, because they believe in particular law enforcement is not legitimate. They can be quite violent, said former FBI agents. So again, anyone that doesn't respect authority is going to be considered violent. So I think you see, uh, see where I'm going. And also what? They're considered a domestic terrorist organization by the FBI. <laughs> I mean, these, are guys, these guys are like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> They're trying to play the legal game with the legal terms that the government uses. But they have a monopoly on this, um, this you know, the legal system, you know. Uh, you're not going to win from it. You're not. I mean, they all wear, it's a Luciferian system, and they all wear their little stars, their little satanic stars, and they go out there and they work. They work for the beast. That's what they do. And until they stop doing that, and they realize that they're screwing everybody else over, this isn't going to change. And then they're going to, of course, there's going to be people that are going to try to defend their sovereignty, and they're going to be called violent terrorists. But cops can go, and they can shoot homeless people 30 times. They can go into a former Marine, a veteran from in combat, and shoot him in front of his wife and family um, 66 times in front of, you know, and he didn't even fire a shot. They could rape women in the back of cars. They can kick, uh, handcuff women in the head. Uh, they can do all sorts of stuff, right, because it's justified. Handcuffed man shot in the back of a police car. That's right. It goes on, it says, as protocol, he was handcuffed behind his back and double-locked in search, and somehow they happened to miss the gun, and shot himself in the head. His mom disagrees, saying, I think they killed him. My son wasn't suicidal. But it doesn't really matter. August 20th, 2012, medical examiner's report into the Chavez-Carter shooting uh, goes on there, and it says the cause of death, gunshot, wound to the head, manner of death, suicide, not murder. Yeah, there's a whole string of suicides going on right now. Suicide of Deloitte partner Daniel Perone, or Peron linked to standard charters Iran scandals. Okay, what the hell is this? The family of a senior partner at Deloitte has called for answers after he apparently committed suicide days after the auditing firm was linked to a uh, standard charter Iran dollar trade scandal. So, ugh. It sounds like someone was getting silenced before they were able to speak in front of court, was accused... Uh, by the New York Department of Financial Services of aiding Standard Chartered in its deception over billions of dollars worth of trades involving Iran. Just, and just prior to his death, days before, he warned his daughters that there was big trouble ahead. And the only reason there's a it's a big deal to do business with Iran is because there's, quote, sanctioned against them that's based off basically nothing. So, it says here, a nurse who saw everything at hospital after suspicious Batman shooting found dead at 46. Jenny Gallagher, a nurse who treated the victims of the highly suspicious Batman shooting in Aurora, Colorado last month, is dead at age 46. The reported cause of death, drowning. And then we have the director, producer, Tony Scott, uh, brother Ridley Scott, jumped to death from San Pedro Bridge and suicide. And I don't know if this is for good publicity, but remember that one of the individuals, I think it was an Indian guy, um, that was involved in this shooting in Colorado, um, was actually supposed to be coming out with some alien uh, serious documentary about alien. And Rid uh, it says here that he actually got um, credit 
uh, Tony Scott for Prometheus, which is kind of a futuristic type movie. But it says, earlier today, Deadline was alerted that an older gentleman who people recognize from either the movies or TV tried to jump off a pier and that the attempt was not successful. So maybe it's like Eddie Murphy, uh, where they say he's dead and he's not. NHS watchdog claimed that whistleblower Kay Sheldon was mentally ill. She spoke out against the health watchdog and immediately began a concerted campaign to discredit her. She Basically, this Kay Sheldon, non-executive director of the Care Quality Commission, that's what their watchdog are talking about, was subject to priority monitoring and declared a risk to the regulator after she had raised concerns that public safety was being compromised by poor leadership and performance. So you're mentally ill. So is this former U.S. Marine Brandon Robb arrested and taken to mental hospital for Facebook post. So... You can go in there and check that out. So Cryptagon asked this question, what is this post? Brandon said, the revolution will come for me. It says, men will be at my door soon to pick me up to lead it. And it says, Wednesday at 10.15 a.m. It says, about two days later, he was cooling his heels in a mental hospital. Study finds U.S. troops' morale is plummeting. It says, ineffective leaders, lack of discipline blamed. I think it's the mission, but it says here, the Army has issued anti-suicide nasal spray. So the military suicide rate doubled in July. That's one of our troops almost every day. So the answer, instead of addressing the mission and the, or the societal issue, is what? Ah, give them $3 million for University of Indiana Research Center. So they're going to put research on the troops. It says here, anti-suicide nasal spray. The euphoric calming antidepressant effect. Oh, man, this is bad news. The spray is only possible because of advances in nanotechnology delivery systems. They're going to research on the guinea pigs and hopefully put the spray not only in the hands of soldiers in a few years, but the uh, dead slaves as well. It's funny. The scientists say that applications can go beyond antidepressant medications. Well, they already do. They use them for uh, nasal vaccinations for children who are scared of needles, so they just do the nasal spray so that they can feel more safe and they would take their eugenics more passively. And we were just talking about genetically engineering ethical babies, i.e. Uh, getting that resistance out of them so that they will take their uh, eugenics passively. And how they offer it as a choice, although eventually it will be what? Mandatory. You know, we're talking about genetic screening. Why genetic screening should be mandatory. And they basically go on there saying people who don't like this or are wary of it are alarmist dystopians. So, Or people who have a valid critique of the indefensible history of eugenics, as if it's over. Right? So they just changed it up, right? So if you put an EU there, eugenics, you put rather than fearing eugenics, we should embrace it. We can do better than the, than chance, than God. So we're talking about a natural lottery and them having the power to intervene. That's why they have what? Pentagon has a virus to attack the God gene, your belief in God. And then who's your daddy truck sells DNA tests on the road. So New York City vehicle sees constant drama. The who's your daddy truck caters mostly to men who aren't sure their, their children are their own, says CBS. They flag us down, they pull us over, they talk to us, says the owner. Kind of weird. He said it's not about te just about testing. He says half the job is to be a psychologist to folks, says the owner. And speaking about learning about human behavior and the mind, hacking the human brain, researchers demonstrate extraction of sensitive data via brain-computer interface. So researchers say that these brain-computer interfaces will be able to steal personal information from unsuspecting victims. And this private information included location of their homes, faces they recognize, and even their credit card PIN numbers. There's a breakthrough electronic circuits that are integrated with your skin. It says here it's basically an electronic circuit mounted on your skin designed to stretch, flex, and twist and to take input from the movements of your body. Again, all in the name of video games. It's like the brain hack. It's all for video games. It's about avatars, guys. They're not going to tell the plebes about that because they want to use them to get it so that the elites can have it for themselves. Top transhumanism CEO says AI singularity will go very badly for humans. Of course, we will be promised immortality, right? It's essentially a merging of man and machine or the development of a new species called the Borg of sorts. So the CEO admits that not only is the research on the AI outpacing safety research, it says, but the singularity would actually make humans the prey of sorts of the superhuman AI. He said the AIs will end up optimizing the world around us for something other than what we want and using up all our resources to do so. And we know that much of this is going to be used for the military, right? Wearable robots could solve soldiers hauling woes, so these exoskeletons are going to be used on soldiers. This was in October 2010. August 2012, Boston Dynamics wins contract to produce humanoid robots. That's right, from DARPA. These robots will be able to provide assistance, such as perform evacuation operations, 
uh, that would otherwise prove too dangerous for human aid. Hmm, makes sense, because U.S. soldiers of the future will be genetically modified transhumans capable of superhuman feats.